Why are fans mad at Kevin Smith over He-Man? Really? <laughs> you made me summon 2007's catchphrase, really? For a really, really, are you really in really that? <laughs> Vice, didn't, didn't Hottie McSkater boy work for them once? What is fan blaming and why are He-Man fans mad at Kevin Smith? <laughs> That's, I mean, <laughs> it's right there, right there in the title. Blaming the fans for not liking the product instead of just saying, eh, all right, sorry, we missed the mark. We misjudged. We went by what the network says, what Ted Biasali said. No, no, <laughs> all right, all right. Why wouldn't they be mad? Like, you know that fans have this ownership, especially of long-time properties, right? It's going to be literally all about He-Man. I mean, it's right there, and it's still there. He didn't delete the tweet or anything. When you're telling me it's literally all about He-Man, you, you have a different expectation, all right? You do have a dis different expectation. That might be part of it. You know, the combative back and forth crap, the wokier than now marketing articles like the one yesterday I covered. Oh, watch that video. The one where they're saying that Sarah Michelle Geller, they're trying to bring her into this. And I don't know what her reaction is to the people who might hate their, her character. But, you know, oh yeah, who am I? I'm Mecca. I'm your favorite YouTube consumer advocate and I've been way, way too late into the video to do this to say that three takes in we can't even speak today it's one of those days amid accusations of making the show too woke kevin smith has fired back at fans in his interviews that's probably a bad idea you know you know what would be the best way to say it and he did give little explanations and he did apologize for leaning into this fake you know narrative that he was a huge he-man fan and he did apologize for being super misleading right he did do all that ish ish and th i think that's the problem though every little thing is an ish every little thing is a yes but there's always a but in there and it's always huge just like me anywho <laughs> i can say it because it's me right if you search trevin smith's name on youtube you will see a surge of videos last week with the sensational thumbnail showing kevin smith's face crying and overlaid with capital letter letters say exposed, defeated, or he's experiencing a meltdown. Because that's how you click them. See, I've been a little less clickbaity on mine because I think I've been taking a little less extreme approach in how I'm interpreting and how I'm watching this show. Smith's new He-Man animated series has hasn't had a graceful landing on Netflix when it was released on July 23rd amid accusations of Smith making the show too woke and abandoning the spirit of the original cartoon. I think it's 100% in the original spirit of the cartoon. In my opinion, even though Tila's way more, uh, bitch, moody, moody in her voice than, uh, the original Tila. Smith has fired back at the fans in interviews. In turn, some fans have called this fan blaming, an emergent fandom term that now that signals how much ownership you think the fans should have over things they're a fan of. When they make it for the fans, this is one of the issues I see all the time. When they make something for the fans of these longtime properties where the creatives are no longer involved and is passed on to somebody else, like in the case of Ted Biaselli at the network or Netflix in general, right? And you're, and you're going with Kevin Smith conceding to the wisdom of the person who's claiming that they're the biggest T-Man fan on the planet, right? And he might very well be. He might have every action figure and know every script and every lore by heart. And his interpretation of it is going to be very, very different than somebody else who also knows every single script by heart and has every toy and action figure and has seen every episode countless times. They're going to have two different identifiers. They're going to have two different things that connect to that story. And this is the problem when we bring in all these old properties that none of these people are really even realizing Kevin Smith should have because because he said flat out in his interview with was a variety the other week that if he was going to have that kind of weight on his shoulders, it better be the best he man he could make. It better be something that's going to be true to the fans. And he probably feels backstabbed that he probably genuinely feels he gave you guys something that you'd want. 
I don't know how he would think that everybody would want a Tila show, but, you know, I'm sure he genuinely thinks that because that's what the network said we wanted. Because the network said that. And when you're in that little Hollywood bubble and you're listening to what some pe somebody says, you're listening, especially if you're not a fan of something, you're not going to have the right direction and wisdom and guidance to really... And this is the same thing in Star Trek. They genuinely think they're giving us something good and they're not. That Smith is at the center of the latest controversy is convenient because he's not a director who wandered into the world of fandom as an outsider, who simply adopted a beloved franchise. Fans and fandoms have always been central to his work. His debut feature, Clerks, put him at the map not only as a leading director in the new wave of 90s indies, indie movies, but for the then groundbreaking decision to allow characters to discuss pop culture. Like the conversation about the politics of blowing up the Death Star. Like real fans. Th this is exactly why he should have kind of known... I mean, maybe, I think a lot of people aren't really getting that with a lot of these old properties, though. This is kind of a fairly newer concept of every fan is going to interpret something differently, and all we can see right now is re and anger with every side. We see it from Hollywood, especially, because you get, you get people like Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones saying, hey, we worked really hard on this, why are you shitting all over our thing? And I hate defending Hollywood because they get paid millions and millions of dollars to get their work shit on, right? That's, that's the difference here between, like, us and them. But at the same time, you know, we, we, do, we do have some sort of investment and ownership when we're spending our lives, our money, our free time, our energy, our brain space, our psychic energy on these properties, yeah, we, we have an entitlement to tell you our opinions, whether we like them, hate them, whatever. So these studios, especially when they're coming in as a corporation, they really, really need to understand that, you know, you're, you're exploiting us as much as we're exploiting you guys, okay? They're, they're exploiting us for marketing. They're exploiting us, especially the YouTube channels. They do a lot of this stuff, so we will talk about this. Motu Revelation was not unanimously received as a slam dunk. Some fans took issue with what they felt was an insufficient amount of the titular He-Man in the show. I can see wanting He-Man in your show because He-Man <laughs> is the main character. He's on all the pegs in the stores. He's the only figure you can still find because he's the one that they put in every single wave. They put multiple copies of because he's the star of the show. So that's why we had the expectation and they can call it Motu all they want, you still have that expectation. You really fucking think Mattel Television, who hired me and paid me money, wants to do a fucking Masters of the Universe show without He-Man. Grow the fuck up, man. This is what we were talking about in chat here, where he says everybody need to grow the fuck up. Some of the ways that Smith has defended himself rub certain fans the wrong way, and they're using an emergent piece of internet technology to describe it as fan blaming. It's a term to exist somewhere half between gaslighting and victim blaming. But that's what they're doing, though. The idea of the creators who make unpopular creative decisions in the legacy nerd media will blame the fans for the negative reaction, rather than taking the blame for their own presumably bad creative choices. It is, is it reasonable that some He-Man fans would be upset? Of course, to those fans saying that some fans have unrealistic expectations about the media they love is denying them their God-given right to dictate how that media is made. And also to complain when it misses the mark. Smith has been accused of fan blaming recently because he has not been shy about talking about, talking about the negative reaction to the Masters of the Universe Revelation show. He has also responded to specific fans and their specific complaints, which began a year before the show was even airing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've gone over that tweet. And no, it's really not all about He-Man. It is literally about Tila. She's the main character. And that's exactly the press screener that, or convention or whatever, that they got the breakdown for. That's what the show's about. That's the synopsis. And that's been floating around from Clownfish. They found that. Fans have taken issue with the aspects show's marketing, which they felt didn't re represent the actual show. That is true as well. The trailers in particular show a lot of He-Man, and they say there's just not as much He-Man in the show. At least they're giving us the valid criticism. Like, they gotta give us a clickbait title, but they are giving us, yeah, here's your valid criticism. Okay. 
He's been resolute in saying that people who are upset about the twists and turns in this show simply don't understand how stories are told. Only half the season is currently out. And Smith hopes that fans will give it time. Some fans, on the other hand, think they were advertised a show about He-Man and were delivered a woke show about female characters. Before creators like Kevin Smith were accessible on Twitter, the separation between creator and fandom was something that only dissolved at fan conventions where, if you were lucky, you'd get to ask something at a Q&A Comic-Con panel. Those could be annoying as well, of course, and Smith famously satirized this in a Chasing Amy scene, complaining about bad comics and tone-deaf adaptations. Could be as toxic as you wanted, but there was a near 0% chance the creator would see it. It's true. I mean, it's true. We do have a lot more access to these people now. And one bad reaction or interaction can sour the entire thing. One bad tweet. One misrepresentative tweet can tank your entire show. And I think people people probably knew going in that they were going in to hate it because we've all been primed and prepped for months and months and months knowing this is going to be a bait and switch, knowing it's going to be a Tila show. So the fact that they weren't just honest with it outright and say, yeah, we're going to reimagine it for the, and, and it would have been over and done with. But we're still talking about it because of the back and forth, because of the response, because last year we got some responses it's literally all about He-Man, and then people like me got responses from other people on the show saying, yes, it's all about Tila. That he still feels like he approaches his work as a fan first, thinking of what the fans want above all else. Netflix exec, this is who we should really be talking about. This executive, Ted BSL, he's like, I yearn to watch the show. I thought I was watching in childhood. That's what I'm looking for here, for the same show, but people can die. Can you do that? And I was like, that's the only thing I can do, Kevin Smith said. This is who wanted to kill He-Man, right? This is who, who decided we're going to get Kevin Smith. You're, you're mad at the gun and not the guy pulling the trigger, basically. That's what it feels like to me. It's like a lot of us are mad at Kevin Smith. But we should be really focusing our, our and not pulling any, nothing literal like that, nothing like that. This is who we should be focusing our, our anger on is the network because that's who wanted to kill. And that's who I've been saying all this time. Honestly, if it had been anything else outside of that, we want you to reinvent this for the modern age. That would have scared me off because I'm not that inventive and also because I know what a fan base reacts like. We talked about that a little bit. You think I'm going to be the fall guy for that? If I'm involved in a thing, it's going to be true to what it is. It's going to be true to the franchise. And he's following what the network says is true to the franchise. As a non-fan, we know he's not a fan. Fans may be being blamed, but they're not victims of anything. Actually, we are. We are. Sure, we didn't have to see it, but there's a lot of people who spent money on this show. There's a lot of people who are investing in Netflix or Mattel, for example, for stock, who are invested in this, all right? And when you do a bait and switch like that, you're actually hurting, this is what they don't understand. This is what these, these little social justice-minded little journalists don't understand about the world. You do have investors, though, that are backing these things, being promised a He-Man show for this generation of people who grew up with He-Man, who want to see our action figures kill each other off. That's what they were promised, and whether or not we got that, sure, whatever. It did piss off a lot of the fan base. A lot of people are canceling their Netflix. This show did drop out of the top ten pretty damn quickly after, what, two weeks? So... It does hurt people. It does, and it's going to affect people next time around. It's going to affect that production company who will probably have to take a budget cut on the next season, and it's going to hurt that creative process, and it's going to tank its own show. So no, you do have to kind of give everybody what they want. And in this day and age, where you have... A, a certain specific fan uprising, a movement of people who say, hey, we want more male heroes. We want more male heroes and role models because we're tired of being talked down to. We're tired of being called man babies and fanboys. And we're tired of being condescended to. We want a strong male hero that can come in and save the day that we can look up to. And we know why you're doing it. We get that part. But fucking stop it already. You don't get to blame us because you're only going to make people revolt. You're only going to make people 
unite against all this bullshit. You're only going to cause exactly the thing that you don't want to happen, right? Or maybe they do. I don't know. And we're all going to say enough is enough. And we're going to stop buying your shit. We're going to stop supporting your crap. And we're going to look at what's happening with the movies. We don't want to go back to the movies just to be told how we're all a bunch of ists and phobes. Look at sports. Nobody wants to fucking cheer on the Olympic athletes because they're being told. They're all, you know, oh, well, we don't want to even support our country. So why are we supporting you? Why would we support you if you hate us? Why would we support anything that, that it, we're hated by? For crying out loud, get that through your heads. It's so annoying. But anyway, I did enjoy this stupid show because it was stupid and fun and all the wrong reasons, but don't be mad at me for it. I'm going back to my live chat. Don't you guys go anywhere? <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you liked it, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye!